Alex Van and Steel isn't one to live in the past, but one certainly couldn't blame him if he did. Portland, Oregon native spent five seasons as an offensive lineman at Carroll College, one as a red shirt, then three and a half years as a starter, and he never missed the NAIA's postseason. Fan and Steel has two national championship rings, a combined record of 66 and 4, and also a pair of all conference accolades. Yes, it would be challenging for Fan and Steel not to dwell on those glory days, but since beginning his career in the coaching world, he's all about the present. As a coach, I don't draw too bad back to my playing days. Shoot, for me, honestly, that was a decade ago. Uh, but you look at it and you understand, having been a part of a championship tradition, where, t where things break the wrong way and where things they break the right way. And I think um, it is a challenge because you want to win. It's what, it's what you do. It's, you're around it. And you understand what a winning culture is and what that looks like. And you're able to point out to guys, hey, this is a winning attitude. This is a losing attitude. These are the plays that we have to make. These are critical situations, not just on game day. Because game day is a reflection of your work leading up to that point, whether it's that week, that month, right, your entire off season. And that's what, to me, I take a look at and go, okay, how do we get to those championships? You look at the work that built up to it. So you try to focus on that work day to day and creating that championship attitude, not on game day, not at practice, but meetings, right? Whether it's the weight room, whether it's what you do in the classroom or off the field, is what you really try to focus on and get those guys to build, knowing that that's gonna build that same attitude and culture and tradition that you know what it takes to win. To hear Fan and Steele speak of tradition and cultures is definitely impressive. His Carroll College football career actually started from a suggestion from current Lady Grizz basketball assistant Mike Petrino, whose family, of course, is loaded with Carroll College history. He advised him to call then-offensive line coach Jim Hogan, which paved way to those 66 wins, two titles, and, of course, all the tutoring. Fan and Steele would become a sponge for football, soaking up all he could from anyone he could. After graduation, he joined the Helena Capital coaching staff before a cross-country move to St. Charles, Missouri and Lindenwood University. But once a saint, always a saint. And Fan and Steele wound up back in Helena just two seasons ago, filled with experiences from each stop on his football journey. I took a coaching class with Coach Van Dees when I was in, when I was in college, and the thing that he said is when you become a coach, you have a toolbox. and You take bits and pieces from each coach that you work with that you like and you're going to keep forever and that you hate and you're never going to do. And he goes, he goes, you see my coaching style is mine, but I'm just a piece of all the coaches that I've worked for. You know, in, in Coach Van Deest uh, and, and his determination and will in terms of work ethic and showing up every day and what is toughness, I really take away from him. You know, uh, from Kyle Mahelish, I, I learned so much about defensive football from Kyle. I went over there and I coached defensive line. I'd never played defense in my life. I was an offensive lineman. And so I learned quite a bit about him and how to handle players and how to motivate um, from him. You know, uh, Pat Ross, I worked for at Linda Wood, he, he taught me the value of his coach. Make sure you spend time with your family and have time uh, to yourself off the field. And I always really appreciated that. You know, Dion Melvin, our defensive coordinator there, was a great mentor to me in terms of how you, you work with kids. Uh, so I've been very fortunate to work with guys that, you know, national coaches of the year, worked for Pat Murphy at Capitol, where he's been a you know, multiple time state champion head coach. I've been very fortunate as a young coach to work for a lot of great people that you just, Little bits and pieces, like you said, you take away and make it a part of what you do. That advice has also made Fan and Steel's trek across the country and back an easier transition. An offensive lineman his entire life, his coaching career actually began on the defensive side of the ball at Capitol before he jumped back to offensive line at Lindenwood and now eventually the tight ends at Carroll. The transition was, you know, in terms of the blocking realm, was really easy for me. You know, having played offensive line in this system with Nick Hallett and then under, you know, Jim Hogan, uh, as an offensive lineman, you have to know what the tight end's doing in the run game all the time. So that, that transition was very easy for me. And having coached offensive line before, uh, you know, the, the blocking techniques, I was able to add to a lot. Uh, you know, in, in working with Nick Hallett, uh, who I played for and, and now have a relationship with as a colleague, has been great because he's taught me so much about the passing game. Uh, not just at tight end, you know, we do so much with Sam and with Eric where they're split out as a wide receiver in the, in the backfield as a running back. Uh, it was a, quite a transition at first, but I've had a great mentor that's, not, you know, that's taught me quite a bit about the, the passing game and helped me translate that over. Fan and Steele, who actually goes by Fanny, also points to his friendship with Carroll defensive line and strength coach Alex Castens, who is also a former Saints offensive lineman. He says the duo provide motivation and even the occasional gentle kick in the behind for encouragement, adding that they're similar in many ways, yet different in so many others. That works well because Fan and Steele and Castens will be working closely this offseason 
providing the Saints strength and conditioning program, while Fain and Steele will also test his tight ends, a group that has seen much turnover in the past year. My role, especially as strength and conditioning coach, is to make sure we get our guys ready to go, right, physically. Um, I think we go into the summer, it's a transition when you're not on the field. Uh, to me, the biggest thing is make sure in the weight room getting those guys, whether we need to get stronger, get faster, get healthy. And then, and then it comes into the classroom aspect with those guys where, you know, we're going to have Eric back at tight end, right? But behind him, we don't have a lot of experience. Uh, you know, Connor McGree, Alex Hoffman, Luke Gleesman, and J.D. Lyle have all moved from tight end to offensive line in the last, uh, the last year. All those guys outside of Luke who was hurt have played and contributed to wins for us on the field at tight end. We've only got one guy left that's played in a game. Um, so for me, I've got to take, whether it's Sam Stratton, uh, Kyle Harrington, Matt Copen from Capitol High who's going to be in, Corbin Walker from Butte High is going to come up and play fullback for us. I'm going to make sure those guys are ready to go and the first time that they see what they're going to see in the fall isn't, you know, August, right, that we're mentally prepared and, and, and ready to go to play. It might not hurt to provide some extra motivation by flashing one of those championship rings either. Richie Melby, MTN Sports.